Hello, this is Bible Academy for Children. I'm Pastor Teacher Curtis Omo, and we are continuing in the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 9. Now before we get started, we need to make sure that we confess our sins. We studied that last time. We also need to make sure that we're controlled with the Spirit of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the opportunity and privilege we have to study your word. We ask now that we'll have open hearts and minds to your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember that the people of Israel or Judah, that's what's left of the nation, were to start returning to the land because the 70 years of discipline of the curse were almost over. Daniel starts to pray to God. Now, before we look at that again, I want to point out to you an important word. I think we've looked at this probably a couple of times before, but it's always good to, to go over things. It helps us learn them. It is the word remnant. Now, the word remnant may basically means what's left over, all right? Uh, we just had Thanksgiving in the United States, and we had a lot of remnants of food. Well, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, but we're studying the Old Testament right now, the remnant is the faithful believers in the nation. Sometimes this may be only a few hundred people out of hundreds of thousands. Maybe it's even less than that. If you know the story of Sodom and Gomorrah and Abraham asking the Lord not to destroy it if he could find 40 men or 35 men in there or faithful that God wouldn't do it and it gets down to just a few, and God still ended up destroying it because there wasn't enough remnant. So the principle is that a remnant are the faithful believers in the nation, depending on where you're talking about. It could be in the world. There is a remnant of believers in the world. There's a remnant of believers in England and in different countries across Europe. A remnant, of course, the United States. And as the remnant gets smaller, smaller, the discipline starts to come. Let's put discipline in a different color. If the remnant's large enough, there may not be any discipline. But as the remnant starts to shrink, you start to see discipline and more discipline. And then more discipline. And this is where Judah was when they went into captivity. Alright? Now, in chapter 9, verse 4, we began to look at the prayer. Now, we looked over this verse last time. But we'll read it over just as a reminder. Daniel's praying. He says, I prayed to the Lord. Remember the capital letter Lord is the covenant name, the personal name. I prayed to the Lord, my God, and confessed and said, O Lord. That's a small Lord name for Master. The great and awesome God who keeps his covenant and loving kindness for those who love him and keep his commandments. Now Daniel starts his confession in verse 5. We have sinned, committed iniquity, acted wickedly, and rebelled, even turning aside from your commandments and ordinances. 
Daniel gives a list of sinful activity that the people of Judah have been doing. Let's look at them a little bit at a time. We have sinned. Well, that means they've missed the mark. They haven't done what God wanted them to do. They missed the goal. So they've sinned against God. Then it says, committed iniquity. That word means to twist something, to pervert something, like someone might twist the law. You know, if the sign says, do not walk on the grass, so what do they do? They run across the grass. I didn't break the law. I just ran. I didn't walk. You see how that's such a twist? So, the people of Judah have also twisted God's law into what they want. You see, they did wrong when they knew what was right to do. They also acted wickedly. Now, usually we see this word wicked in relation to the word evil. So now they're going beyond just sin. They're getting into evil, like idol worship. You know, that's something that the pagans do all the time. Pagans are unbelievers. We often use that word pagan for people who are very much into the pagan, worldly way of life. Thinking little about God. And sometimes even just being moral, doing basic things right, like not stealing and, and not lying. They also rebelled. Now we know what rebelled means. It means to rise and revolt, to go against the government. In this case, they're going against God's law. It's complete turning away from God and actively working against Him. And then it says, even turning aside from your commandments and ordinances. Well, that would be they're just ignoring the law, the Mosaic law that told them how to live. Okay? They defied, that means they turned against, they worked against God's authority at every level. Now, Daniel just confessed a lot of sins. What does that tell us about these people? What kind of people are they? Well, remember, they're still in captivity. It's time for them to go back. But they're still deep into sin and rebellion. Not much has changed. And remember, 70 years. So a lot of the people who originally were captured have already died off. And now it's their children and grandchildren. And they need to go back to the land. But they've continued in sin just like their parents. Verse 6. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes and fathers, and to all the people of the land. Notice how Daniel includes himself. We have not listened. But you know Daniel has listened. But now he's speaking as one member of the nation. He's speaking as if he's confessing the sins of the nation. That was what was in his heart. That tells you how much he loved his people and wanted them to turn around. But you know, this prayer really didn't change the individual hearts. People still have to turn to God themselves. But Daniel prays, asking God to show mercy on his people. Notice how he says, we didn't listen to your prophets. God had sent 
many prophets to Israel and then to Judah. That's why we have so many prophets' books in our Bibles. They're writing and they're speaking <clears throat> to the people of Israel who are about to come under discipline because of their disobedience. And God would send them a prophet. Sometimes he'd speak to the king. Sometimes to the people or both. Listen to 2 Chronicles 36, verses 16 and 17. Now, a Chronicles is like a history book of the Bible. And we're looking at the last chapter and the last section where it's talking about the fall of Jerusalem. The fall of Jerusalem where Daniel would have already been captive by now. But now this city is about to fall. And listen to what the writer of Chronicles says. But they mocked God's messengers, despised his words, and scoffed at his prophets. You know, that's like making fun of them. Until the wrath of the Lord was aroused against his people and there was no remedy. That means there's no cure. It's too late now. They've went too far. They've mocked the messengers. They've despised God's words. And now the wrath of God is on them. And there's no fixing that. Verse 17. He brought up against them the king of the Babylonians who killed their young men with the sword and the sanctuary, that's even in the temple area, and spared neither young man nor young woman, old man or aged. God handed all of them over to Nebuchadnezzar. And remember, he's the king of Babylon. So when Jerusalem fell, People were killed. And what, what weren't killed, they were taken over to Babylon in captivity. The point is, the people did not listen to the messengers. They mocked them. They had Isaiah, they had Jeremiah, and they didn't listen. There were many prophets. So there's no excuse they had rejected God's warning for many, many years. Do they deserve coming back to the land? Well, no, but God was going only to keep them out of the land for 70 years. So God keeps his word. So he's not going to keep them beyond 70 years. They can come back. They can set up the temple. But they have to each choose in their own heart for God. Just like you. You know, you may be the only one who really loves God in your entire family. And you may be the remnant in your family. Think about that. It's important that you stay faithful to God. Hopefully it's all your family members. But each one has to choose on his own. Verse 7, Daniel continues his prayer. We will talk about God and how the people are so sinful. First of all, to God, to you belongs righteousness, O Lord, but to us belongs shame of face, as it is this present day. To the men of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem and all Israel, those who are nearby and those who are far away, in all the lands where you have been driven then, because of their faith, unfaithful acts which they have committed against you. Well, let's look at this verse like we have a little bit at a time. 
To you belongs righteousness, O Lord. That's God, of course, using the word of authority, the title of authority. He's righteous. God as ruler, as judge, always does the right thing. And then notice, but to us belongs shame of face. Well, that's kind of a strange way to say it, but what that tells us is that when one's ashamed, it shows in his face. Okay, you've seen people who get ashamed, and I'm sure you have too, where you kind of hold your head down, and you know, you might kind of wave it back and forth. But it showed on their face. And notice it says, as it is this present day they're still that way the children and uh, the children and grandchildren of the ones who were taken in captivity are doing the same thing you know as children we may have to break away from some of the bad things that those around us do and just go on our own and say, I'm going to obey God. I don't care if it's at school or with some of your friends or maybe even some of your relatives. I'm doing this, I'm doing this video during the holiday season when people have relatives around them. Maybe the relatives want to go out and, and do some things that you know you shouldn't be doing. So you say, no, I'm not going to do that. That's not right. So you do the right thing, you see. Remember, if you're a member of the remnant, you'll want to do the right thing. Then in our verse, Daniel lists some of the people. To the men of Judah. To the inhabitants. That means the people who live in Jerusalem. And all Israel. But he says, those who are nearby. That may be cities that also have captives throughout Babylon. Remember, it covered a large area, so the captives would be all over now. They would have spread the captives among the cities. Those who are nearby, those who are far away. Wherever you've been driven, you see, wherever, ha wherever God has landed you for your discipline, They had committed sins against God. Verse 8. O Lord, to us belongs shame of face. To our kings, our princes, and fathers, because we have sinned against you. Now Daniel mentions some of the leaders, the kings, the princes, even the fathers had had positions where they could have made better decisions and they didn't for God. And what's happened is is that so many had become part of the culture. What do you mean by culture? Let's talk about that. You've probably heard this term culture. Culture is, well, an easy way to say it. It's just the way people live. It's the way people live. What they eat, what they do in their spare time, the way they wear their clothes, the way they talk, their habits, whether they're good Christian people or evil people or somewhere in between, you see. And what had happened is that many had learned to accept, remember I used this word a while ago, pagan culture. They might join in with their idol worship. Uh, we have a lot of that in the United States. Uh, people worship all sorts of people. We call them celebrities, movie stars, singers football heroes they become 
the ones they look up to rather than God. And some of them even live to the next time they can watch that person or listen to that music. You see, what happens is Christians get caught up into that pagan culture and it hurts their walk with God. So, the pagan culture becomes something that begins to rule over the lives of people. And as a Christian, even though you live in the world and this culture is all around you, you still walk that straight line for God. All right? And you don't let those things in the pagan culture affect you. And believe me, they'll come from all directions, from all types of people, from just about everywhere you go. You see a lot of it in entertainment. Uh, but it also, if you're grown up, it's in business. It's in politics. It's real thick in politics. And pretty soon, you, it seems like everything around you is corrupt. And you know what? That's because it is. The world is corrupt. The cultures are corrupt. One may seem cleaner than the other, and that may be true. One may be more moral, but still, it's an unbeliever's culture out there. You don't find hardly any TV shows that really mention God, let alone Jesus Christ. Very, very few. Same way with movies and books. And now they want to get it out of a lot, a lot of businesses. They don't want God in businesses. But you see, it always comes down. It comes down to an individual's heart. It comes down to your heart and whether you're really faithful to God. There's not much you can do to change culture. There's really not. But you can talk to people about Jesus and they can change their heart and they may join you in walking with God. But don't think you're going to do much against the culture. Culture can get awful. It can become very anti-Christian and very anti-God. But people's hearts need to change. And that comes from the inside. One of the dangers is so many people want to get involved in changing the culture that they don't walk with God. They forget that they're here to follow Jesus. Jesus didn't change culture. Nope. He changed hearts. And then as the remnant grew and started to live like God wanted them to, sure, that had some effect on culture. But the point is, it came from the heart. Don't forget that. Now, let's continue on with verse 9. Daniel continues his prayer, confessing the sins. To the Lord our God belongs compassion and forgiveness, for we have rebelled against him. You see, the first thing you need to do is admit that you're doing wrong. Admit that you're sinning. And when you do that, when you've confessed your sin, then you can get on the right track with God. First of all, you have to deal with the sin. Notice, to the Lord our God belongs compassion and forgiveness. He's always there to forgive. God's waiting to forgive us for our sins. We just have to confess them. We don't have to try to make it up to him. We can't. How can a sinner make up his sin? All he does is sin more. You see? So just give it over to God, confess your sin, and move on. 
God is ready to forgive. Verse 10. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws in which he set before us through his servants, the prophets. Here we see more of the same thing. Daniel says, Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord. They didn't obey. They didn't walk in his laws. Even though they had been given to them, including the prophets, they came and told them what the law said when they would forget, when they were disobedient. The prophets were sent to remind the people to turn back to God. And isn't if you think about that, they had chosen to not follow the law. But God sent some prophets to warn them, you better start following the law or you're going to come under the curse. And this would go on for years and years. And the people would still not obey the law. You remember King David. David was the great king over all of Israel. Now that was before the nation split. Well, it was a great nation at times under David and then Solomon. And then things really started to go downhill. And they continued to go downhill. Now and then they'd have a good king in Judah. But then they'd have a bad one. And now they were at their end. They'd come under discipline and went into captivity. Verse 11, Daniel continues to confess the sin for the nation. Indeed, all Israel has transgressed your law and turned aside, not obeying your voice. Therefore, the curse has been poured out on us, and the oath which is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, for he have sinned against them. You see, Daniel even mentions the curse here. Because of their transgression, the curse has been poured out. Now, we're not talking about just a dripping, like you might drip the water off your hands, or it might drip out of the faucet. But it's been poured out, like you take a bucket and just pour it on them. You see? And notice that it's written in the Law of Moses. The curses are written in the Law of Moses. It's very clear that if they don't do something, then this is going to hap happen to them. We're going to read that in a little bit. We're going to look at the curses. So, they have transgressed the law. That means they've crossed over the boundaries. They have turned aside from not obeying God's voice or the voice of the prophets. They did not obey so let's look at this verse one more time indeed all Israel has transgressed your law and turned aside not obeying your voice therefore the curse that's the penalty has been poured out on us, and the oath which is written in the law of Moses. Now, why, why does he mention oath? Because an oath is like a promise that is going to happen. So, the oath and the curse go together. If you disobey, I promise you, you're going to get cursed. You see? And it's written in the law. They can see it themselves. The one law that Moses, who served God, gave them. Now, this is under what we call, we've looked at this before, the Mosaic Law. The Mosaic Law. This is the law God gave Moses 
on Mount Sinai many years before, back in the book of Exodus. And they call this Mosaic Law the Book of the Covenant. And that was a agreement. A covenant's like an agreement or a contract that if they obeyed, there was blessing. If they disobeyed, there's what? Cursing, of course. So, they should not have been surprised that they would get cursed if they disobeyed the law. Now, next lesson, we're going to go back to Exodus and we're going to look at that law. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We have been challenged again to see how we need to follow you no matter what the culture tells us. We need to obey you obey your word so we might live under your blessing and father we thank you for what jesus has done so we know we already are bound to be with you forever but help us walk with you every day in the power of the spirit making sure that we confess our sins so we can walk close with you we ask these things in jesus name Amen.